this is it. This is going to be the first video of our 2023 contest. All right, now, recap. Last year, we were ready with um, five locomotives. However, due to a serious issue with a workshop flooding a bit, um, these 280s, which are acrylic, their shells, they warped and cracked out and they did, did not turn out and there was no way I could fix them in time. And so, I went to the contest and got disqualified. Now, here's the thing. I didn't get... So I wasn't going to enter them because they weren't done, they weren't ready and everything. But when you go to a, a regional convention... And you, and you go to the contest room. Remember, these are your friends. These are your friends. They want you to succeed. And they encouraged me to enter. And so I brought all this stuff. And even though it did not look like that, they were totally warped and, and everything was wrong with them. And I entered this stuff. I got the highest score I've ever gotten. And then I got disqualified. I knew in advance that I'd be disqualified because they didn't work. But they did me the favor of giving me the, the feedback that I needed. So that I said, okay, I'm going to bring them back next year. And they said, we want you to bring them back next year to see how you finished. That's very encouraging. And that's why I love this program. That's why I'm in it. I don't even know what will happen if I complete the contest and, and win the merit awards and stuff, what am I going to do then? Who knows? Because um, I just love doing it every year. So here's the thing. Where? One of the places we got stuck. Okay, so here, to recap, here is the 280 as an acrylic frame. This is an example. Okay, so this is the front, this is the shell that we designed for the 280. If you can see pretty cool I mean all the doors are inset none of them are on top all the details it even says uh, if you can read that it says massive air handling this is the air handler and I even made a see how, how it's wider right here that's to fit the 280 motor and these are sweet look at look at ogre here I love the way these turned out it turned out great, so I got to bring them back. But but I want to do better. All right. So what we where we were at is we had come up with this. Now, if you remember right, we were having some trouble with frames. Then we tried all kinds of stuff, and then finally we came up with this idea of using a negative space frame, where on a regular frame of a locomotive, there is it goes around these trucks. We said, well, what if we did it the opposite way and made the frame where the regular frame isn't? And that it works. It totally works. In fact, it's easy to do. There's one problem with it, though. And here's the problem. This is what... In order to use this frame, especially like on Pug, here's Pug's Mark 10 trucks. One of the best trucks we ever made. Okay, so they fit in here. There's a pintle, as you can see right there, there's a pintle. Fits right there. Okay. No problem. See that? That's what we want. But there is a problem. And the problem is, you see these brass shelves on here? Those are really hard to make. To make them accurate, it's a ton of labor, and we don't want to do that labor. So we're going to start over, sort of. I'm going to show you in a second here. The 280 frame is fantastic, other than the fact that the weight goes over these two axles and not on the front one. That's a weakness. That is a weakness of the Mark 10 truck, is that the weight should be coming down on all three axles, which means it needs to be moved forward, but there isn't room for to move it forward. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, Okay, so 
to start over. We're gonna do, we're gonna try to go back to the way that regular frames are made. And this time we're gonna use this super thin aluminum bar stock. We're gonna try this first. And we will cut, cut it out, and we'll mill it and stuff to make it so it fits down just perfect over the truck and around the front and fits under the shell just perfect. So we don't need that shelf. I don't want that shelf. These are, okay, these are fantastic. But they're very difficult to reproduce. Even though I've already re reproduced all the ones I need, they're hard to make. Not a little hard, they're really hard. So I don't want to do that again. So we'll try it. We'll, we'll try doing some more. Now, let's go look at trucks. So trucks is, is a thing where for our purposes of in the contest to win Master Modeler, we don't actually have to go this far. We could take some old truck from something else and repurpose it, and all we would have to do is make the side frame. You remember when we molded that side frame with remelt? Yeah, we could just do that. But I don't want to do that. I want to go all the way. So here is the Mark 7 truck. This is the best truck we've ever made. This is an amazing truck. But it has a weakness. And the weakness is this. The truck works amazing. We got 3D printed thrust washers. It's but it has to be bolted together. Okay, and you see where that bolt is? That is where the pintle needs to go, but it can't because of the bolt. The other thing is the worm tower. The worm tower is it's too difficult because there's no cap on the ends. And you can't glue it on here and bond it because then you can't get the worm in and out. And one of our one of our requirements is to have a truck that can be totally disassembled when it comes time for maintenance. And while here it is, the Mark 10, which is basically the seven with some improvements, can be totally disassembled. But look at all the difficult parts we have to make. We've got to make this tin bottom cover. We got to make the tin pintle. We got to screw it, and and we got to make these end plates. And it's too. It is so super custom that it's hard to make. And this is this is the the best generation of trucks that we made. However, let's take a look. So there's the Mark 7, which it was the, that was the breakthrough truck. Because it's a beautiful run truck. Here, look at this. Here's the Mark 8. It has four axles. DD40 replacement. However, the Mark 8 has a weakness. And the weakness is its long wheelbase will not make a 15-inch radius curve. And as you know, that is one of our things. We want to make the 15. Now, if you didn't need to make 15, the Mark 8 actually works. Look, it's only got three gears. Super awesome. But it doesn't make 15. So what we need is a new modular truck, which I have now gone four more generations to make this. This is the Mark 14. And it should be extendable to any number of axles. Also, it's got a housing for the worm. What I did this time is I 3D printed it on the old Me Creator, which is now eight years old. And I got new filament and I 3D printed it into two parts. So it just fits together. Like I, there's a window here that doesn't really matter. I use that in the 3D program to center the. Uh, shaft for the worm it's not there for any other reason other than i didn't want to fill it in but these fit together just like this and right now i'm building a bottom plate that will screw into the ends to hold the bottom plate on but otherwise it's super simple like this it's only two pieces and here are the gears we've got three 18 tooth gears a single 20 tooth and this worm shaft Okay, and when we put that together, we get this. This is the Mark 14. And the Mark 14 spins and rolls nicely. Other than that. It's not held together by anything. Oh, and the gear fell out. 
It's not held together by anything right now, so that doesn't really matter. But it, it spins nicely, and that's where we're at. That's where we're starting. So we get this guy good to go. We'll be able to put... Here's the thing with 3D printing. Okay, people are like, oh, why don't you 3D print gears and stuff? Because you can't. 3D printers aren't that good. I don't care what kind you have. These holes are marked by the 3D printer. Four holes. Then they have to be drilled with a drill bit of the appropriate size. Otherwise, they don't work at all. And not only that, these sockets here for the wheels, they've got to be filed a bit to get them to fit together. Then the cover on the other side, same way, you got to file these openings a little bit. You got to drill the holes and you got to drill. So I have, see that cutout? That's to get the worm in there. Like, oh no, how am I going to block it? That turns out I don't need to. But getting the worm in here is super easy. It just goes in. And I'll put some thrust washers on it, but it just goes in like, oops. See, let's back out. Okay, so the worm goes in here like, like that snaps into place. There we go. We got our worm in there. Okay, so the tough thing to do is the gear math. And there is no text, there is no website, there is no nothing that will ever help you figure out the gear math. So I'm going to make a video about it later that helps you with the gear math. Because the hardest thing to do with these is to get the gears to mesh together. Like that Mark 7, which had the perfect mesh. Look at that. These guys have the perfect mesh. That's really hard to do. And I'm surprised I did this freehand and it turned out perfect. I didn't know one critical piece of information that I know now that allowed me to make this. And I'm gonna do something on the whole business of matching these gears. But that's where we're at. Contest 2023 has begun. And this year, we're gonna bring back the 280s. Pug is gonna be first. Since he has put in so much work, he's got to be the guy that goes first. He deserves, he deserves first position because of all the work he's put in. He's getting some new trucks and he's going to get a new underframe. We're going to try it and then we'll see. But here we go. Contest is on.